we're looking at a poem titled The Anvil and the Armor by an award winning poet from Africa known as Kofi Awano. Now, the poem uses two materials that are usually known for as materials used by goldsmiths and blacksmiths the anvil and then the hammer. Now, what we're going to ask ourselves some questions. Why did the poets choose to use those symbols that are predominantly used by blacksmiths and goldsmiths in order to give a clear picture of what he was trying to say in his poem? Now, the poem talks about a character who was a bit confused. Confused in the sense that, first of all, let's look at what the anvil is, what it means. Of course, we know what an armor is. The anvil is a tool used by the blacksmith, and it's an iron block on which a blacksmith puts a hot piece of metal before shaping it with a hammer. It's also a tool and handle used for breaking things. Now, literally, the poet sells himself as a hot piece of metal on the hand of a blacksmith that is about to be beaten and shaped into life. We all know that if you go to a blacksmith shop, a, a, the blacksmith can make any melter into any form. If, in, that, in the form of an earring, a bangle, a necklace, an instrument for farming or anything. But before that instrument is being beaten to what is being beaten into, it's usually a hot piece of melter that with the aid of the hammer, the blacksmith or the goldsmith can make it into an instrument. So the poet was looking at himself as that anvil, that melter point that is being used to beat into instruments. Now, the poet is planning to undergo something that looks like a panel beating to get into a new transformation of life. And he wanted to transform from an old way of life into a new way of life. But from the lines of the poem, we find out that the poet was left sad and unsatisfied. Now, let's look at the deep interpretation of this work. Now, it is said that the poet Kofi Awono, like we said, is from Africa. And we know how much colonialism was spread in the African countries. And in one of our previous topics in this literature, we looked at a poem titled Piano and Drums by Gabriel Okara that talked about the transition from the old era to the new era, how people were seeing themselves as, okay, we are no longer African, we want to buy that which is new, which is the Western culture. Everything we are doing now is trying to imbibe what was being passed into us. Now, this same poet also shared that same sentiment. They, were, they had an old structure, so to speak, and now everybody wanted to fit in into that new life. And we can literally say the blacksmiths is those that brought the colonialism on us. Now we Africans, we are now the anvil that the blacksmiths were trying to use the hammer to mold into any shape or form that they wanted us to mold us into. And if you look at it carefully, we said that the poet was looking for a total transformation. And the total transformation is that he was trying to abandon that which he has been known for which is Africa, which he has been doing right from death to adopt a new way of life. Now let's look at some of the structures that was used in the poem to drive the points home. First of all, the, man, the poet made use of symbols. Symbols, which is the anvil and the armor. These in themselves are symbolic, not like literal anvil or literal hammer. They are symbolic forms that were used by the poet. Now, this anvil and the hammer is talking about a new and old concept. The personal and cultural differences of this poet was redefined, was changed into another new concept. That is like putting a conflict between which is its own culture and that other culture that was superimposed on us through the bringing in of colonialism. Now this symbols was used by the poet to create a picture, a mental picture in our eyes as students, as viewers, to understand that, okay, the poet is, like I started in my introduction, I started by saying, if you go to a blacksmith shop, that these tools are what is being used to build metals into any form and shape they want them to take. Now so, this poet is now making us to have a mental picture that, okay, 
we had a particular form and shape which is known by us basically right from time but because we had a new way of doing things the blacksmiths who brought in their own culture the blacksmiths in this time now is talking about the colonizers they now beat us into another form we took another form another representation abandoning that old form we came with that was what the poet was trying to look at in the poem and from bringing a new form we now look at it that we had this kind of self-degradation for you to abandon something in the first place it means that thing was no longer working or that thing does not add any value to you any longer that's why you have to abandon it to pick a new one so personally i feel that the poet was trying to make us understand that at some point as africans with our own culture we degraded ourselves first of all thereby losing uh, leading to a lack of personal identity or cultural identity and then we adopted a new form a new identity which was the western ways of doing things now from this whole engagement we can say that what the poet the subject matter was between a conflict between the old and new culture this was basically what the poet was looking at so viewers students who are viewing this if you have this at the back of your mind in any exam situation if you are asked to look at the thematic background of what Kofi Amono was trying to say in the poem the anvil and the hammer have it at the back of your mind that the poet was looking at a situation whereby Africans were being subjected to drop their old way of doing things and then pick up a new one and then this new one is colonization a new culture that came with its own way of living own way of doing things own way of dressing and eating that was changed and imposed on what we already have and then the poet told us in some line in the poem that this led us to a self degradation because at the end of the day the poet was left sad and unsatisfied after he had left his own old way of doing things to pick up the new way so this was what the message that was behind the poem now let's look at the devices that the poet used in driving the points home one of them was alliteration alliteration in one line of the poem the poet alliterated some consonant sounds when he said the punks that tender and tenors tender and tenors let's write them out so we could understand them properly tender and tenors now the T sound I was alliterating then he also used oxymoron oxymoron flimsy glories flimsy glories and then he used also used onomatopoeia real pull from a line in the poem he said real pull so the language of change and transformation is what I can call the poem language of change and transformation a transformation that was not useful useful in the sense that at the end of the day when we take your time when you take your time to read the poem you'll find out that the poet was left dissatisfied he was not happy let's take a line from in the poem so we can understand one of the things we are trying to say in the first line he said we are caught between the anvil and the hammer in the forging house of a new life transforming the punks that delivered me into joy of new songs the trapping of the past tender and tenors woven with fiber of sisal and washed in the blood of the goats in the fetish hut are now led to the flimsy glory of paved streets the jargon of a new dialectic that comes with the charisma of the perpetual search on the outlaws hill so from this place we can see that the poet was saying they deviated from their old way of doing things into some flimsy glory something that was new to them a new he called it a jargon of a new dialect a language that was different from the language that they were using in this in the first time and all this led to a sad and unsatisfying end for the poet so students basically the anvil and the hammer is just like Gabriel Akara's piano and drums that talks about the conflict between our old way of doing things and our new way of doing things. So the conflict between the old and new culture is the basic message that the poet was trying to send in the poets.